Don't be perplexed by brachioplexopathy. A 42-year-old female presents to the clinic for new onset weakness in her right arm and shoulder pain. She states that about one week ago, she woke up with a sudden right arm and shoulder pain, which subsided after a few days. She now feels weakness in her right arm and shoulder. She feels like her shoulder is unstable while performing daily activities and wonders if her shoulder may be dislocated. Her past medical history is significant for diabetes type 2. How do we evaluate, diagnose, and treat this patient? The brachial plexus is a complex structure formed from the C5 to T1 nerve roots and ends in individual peripheral nerves that supply sensory and motor functions to the upper extremities. The brachial plexus is organized approximately to distally into components called roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and the terminal branches. Brachial plexopathies can occur from several causes, including trauma, compression from tumors originating in nearby tissues, cutaneous radiation injury, and inflammatory or autoimmune injury. Common differentials include tendinitis, rotator cuff pathology, complex regional pain syndrome, and a cervical radiculopathy. Physical exams should focus on determining which components of the brachial plexus are involved, while also considering non-neurological causes, such as muscle or ligament dysfunctions. In addition to palpation and testing passive and active range of motion, a full motor examination with keen emphasis on those innervated by C5 to T1 nerve roots should be performed along with sensory exam and reflexes. In brachial plexopathy evaluations, it is important to pay close attention to muscles innervated by the rostral portion of the brachial plexus since these are commonly affected. Check for things such as scapular winging, weakness in external rotation and abduction of the shoulder, and weakness in muscles supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve. We can then use the exam findings to localize the site of injury. Diagnostic tests can help identify possible etiologies, including idiopathic, autoimmune, inflammatory, infectious, microvascular from diabetes, or malignancy. Consideration may be given to imaging studies, particularly MRI, to assess for tumor or other mass presence causing compression of the plexus. Magnetic resonance neurography can visualize individual roots, plexus segments, and peripheral nerves. It can sometimes suggest the presence of inflammation, nerve edema, demyelination, compression, and associated muscle denervation. Additionally, nerve conduction studies and needle EMG are useful for lesion localization and can help provide prognostic value as they can help determine injury severity. Management is primarily symptomatic, while physical and occupational therapy can be helpful in compressive plexopathies. Early in the course of the illness, when pain is the predominant symptom, analgesics and neuropathic pain medications may offer relief. A short course of corticosteroids may also be helpful. Physical and occupational therapy may help to preserve shoulder, arm, and hand functional capacity, but do not typically hasten recovery. A guided exercise program can help patients recover strength over time and avoid joint injury by encouraging use of proper form and resistance. The outcomes of non-traumatic plexopathies vary based on the underlying pathology. Recovery typically happens within the first year, but can take as long as three years to resolve fully. Some patients may have persistent weakness and disability, so it is important to ensure they have appropriate adaptive equipment, therapy, and compensatory strategies. Our patient is diagnosed with a type of brachial plexopathy known as neuralgic amyotrophy, also referred to as Parsonage-Turner syndrome, that occurs idiopathically. Her exam showed weakness in muscles supplied by the rostral parts of the brachial plexus. These abnormalities, including scapular winging, weakness in right shoulder abduction slash external rotation, and weakness in right elbow flexion, This indicates injury primarily to the long thoracic nerve, which innervates the serratus anterior and governs scapular protraction and to the upper trunk of the brachial plexus, leading to the weakness in shoulder abduction, 
external rotation, and elbow flexion. For more information on brachial plexopathy, including a review article, please see the course resources. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit an.com for a session neurobites.